That's so true. That's so true. Hey, uh, I'm Jordan. Welcome back to part two of our bench build here. And I'm assuming you've seen the first one in which we built the base and a laminated two by four top to make a very strong utility bench, perfect for outfeed tables, assembly, hand tools, anything you need it for, picnics, etc. If you're watching this one, it's because you're the type of person that wants to make it even more useful. So stay tuned as we build a cabinet that fits in it. It'll have shelves, drawers, so lots of storage. And then we'll also go over a pretty cool vise that we'll put in it, a uh, paper roll, just a bunch of other little things to make it even more versatile. So without further ado, back to the garage. In a fitting first use of our new workbench, we will build the cabinet that will go inside it on top of it. So I'm gonna put a sacrificial piece of, piece of foam and plywood and break it down into more manageable pieces with a track saw. Then we can cut it into the actual size of the pieces on the table saw. For the sides that are gonna hold our fixed shelf, we are going to use a dado or a groove. And if you recall from the first video, I mentioned that my table saw does not support a dado stack. We're just gonna do a quick pass, nudge the fence over a little bit, and then uh, do another pass and keep doing that until we get a groove that is the width of our material, in this case, three quarter inch. Super. Then we can clean it up with a chisel, and then we will cut that piece into its proper dimensions. And you always start with one larger piece if possible because then you know your grooves are gonna be in exactly the right height because they're from the same board. The bulk of the cabinet will be made with pocket holes. So we get set up to do that and batch a whole bunch of them out. The main way we will be fastening this is with glue and reinforcing with pocket screws. And in this case, the pocket holes will be on the outside because they're gonna be covered later on, you won't see them. Use a couple squares of some sort to make sure that you are square. And then we'll go ahead and screw in those pocket holes. Same for the opposite side. This is uh, the inside of where the drawers are gonna be. So I have the pocket holes on the inside because you won't see those either. Same method, glue, screws. I put the middle piece in, same fashion. The pocket holes are on the right, you can't see them. But I use glue and then we'll put glue across the top and then we will attach the top. You know what I meant. Anyway, uh, set it on and we're not gonna see the top of it. So we're gonna use a countersink bit and these uh, inch and a quarter screws and we will attach directly down into the sides. And then uh, checking for square, of course, as we go. And then we will also attach the pocket hole screws. For the shelf that's gonna go on the left-hand part of the cabinet, we cut a little notch to go around uh, the middle portion. You'll see that in a moment. And then I'm gonna give it a little round over and we're gonna sand it all before we put it in, which will make it a lot easier. We will also sand quickly the interior of our cabinet. Because now is the time. And the outside. We don't have to worry about the top, because once again, it will be covered, and the bottom. Now we can attach our back and you can see how we left three quarter inches of space for that back to fit in between the bottom and top panel. And I am purposely leaving the back of the left side open for oversized items to stick through if they need to. Now, let's have a proctology, or I mean, let's put on our poly on the inside. And we're gonna do a couple coats to tree. This is force a habit more than anything, but I always do one coat, even on the parts you're not gonna see. It's more of a actual hardwood than plywood because of expansion stuff, but I, I just do it anyway, whatever. So I got three coats on that interior. 
and it's all dry and shiny. So let's go ahead and put in our middle shelf, or really our only shelf. And I managed to get a snug enough fit that it's gonna be just glue. Sucker's real tight, which is good. That's what we want. Get in there, you. Fire in a couple brads. And there's that notch that we cut because it was going into the groove and the back went up against it. And now I'm busting out my drawer slides. I am using eight pairs of full extension. And just to help with the fit, I always bend these tabs out. First, that gives us a tiny bit of extra wiggle room. For a prior project, I had picked up this Rockler drawer slide jig. This is not crucial by any means. I've built many other drawers where I just use a spacer to get the height between them, but this does make it a little easier and it also makes it flush every time to your face, which is nice, 90 degree flush. Not my face, the cabinet face. My face gets flush from too much exercise or eating too much or drinking too much or being embarrassed. Um, basically my face is flush often. Uh, to put in the other drawer slides, the jig has a little um, sliding piece that you can set your height at and then you can match it on the next part. And I work my way across the cabinet. It's pretty handy and actually it's relatively cheap. So if you're doing a lot of drawer slides, it's worth picking one up. However, when you get in a tight spot like this up at the top, it, it won't work. So um, in this case, you're just gonna use a traditional spacer anyway, which is how you could have put these all up in the first place. So cut it to the height you want, set it on the drawer slide that's already there and use that to put in your next one. No big deal. And even though we've planned it all out, it never hurts to do one final measurement before we start actually breaking down our plywood to make the drawers. So now we know exactly what size those drawers need to be. And they're all the same width, but it's actually three different depths on these drawers. So I'm gonna batch them all out, get them into their respective piles for assembly. Uh, and before we start, I actually, the drawer faces are gonna be kind of a cool continuous green with a splash of color. So I'm gonna paint that and let it dry while I'm assembling these. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up and uh, we're gonna use this delightful color green and go ahead and hit that a few times. A couple coats, let it dry in between each coat. And yeah, I'm getting the inside of my garage door because I don't care, it's awful. Anyway, look at how nice that looks. Good shine on there, very attractive. Okay got our box pieces, drawer pieces, all labeled and set out in neat piles. We've got uh, an idea of how we're going to assemble it, like so. And we have a jig, another Rockwood jig, for doing box joints. Uh, you basically just put a big old spiral upcut bit in there, half inch. There's a little sacrificial board in front to hold everything in. And in this case, uh, we're gonna pop it off and try to gang these at once and see how that works. It'll be a lot faster. Uh, I wasn't sure how it would function with plywood and um, it worked okay. Uh, there was a lot of tear out. With hardwood, it would have worked better for sure. But I, I, I was reasonably happy with those results. So uh, feeling confident, I went to do the alternating boards and um, just found it did not work ganging those up at all. There, there was too much play and I did not like the results. Uh, it was way more sloppy and a little bit of it got off. Oh, bless you. Dear me, so much dust. What is this, a workshop? <laughs> Anyways, uh, I said to heck with ganging it and just went one at a time with the fence. Obviously it takes longer, but I got better results for sure. I should mention, do you need box joints for these drawers? No, and under normal circumstances, I would just 
regular glue and brad these drawers together. They're shop drawers. To be honest, I just wanted to practice. Uh, I haven't done a lot of box joints, and because I don't have a dado stack on my table saw, this jig is probably the easiest way to do it, other than doing it by hand, and it's fine. It's not great, but yeah, you don't need to. To put the bottom in each drawer, we are going to route an eighth inch groove along the bottom. So I've got an eighth inch bit in the router and using the fence makes it real easy. It'll be consistent all the way around. It should be a nice snug fit. Oh sure, that's nice. Okay, pieces are all final. Now we can actually glue them up for real. So um, we'll put them in the fingers, the boxes in the groove for the bottom all the way around, uh, persuade if need be with a mallet, and then set them up in our clamps. I don't have enough clamps to do all eight drawers at the same time, but you know, we'll, we'll batch them out. So check for square and tighten them up. And mamma mia, we got us a box. Once it's done, I'm putting a round over bit into the old router and we're gonna run it around the bottom of every one of them so we don't get any sharp edges and we'll do the top as well oh yeah and this could be construed as overkill but I disagree if you're gonna grab the boxes might as well have softer edges on them so I do the interior as well it's a fast easy step might as well do it then if you want to complain about something complain about sanding <laughs> oh man that's a lot of it's a lot of sanding to do. It's, uh, it's, it just looks like eight boxes, but it, uh, it'll, it'll get you. It'll take some time. So now we're gonna take our drawer front piece and break it up into the respective eight separate faces that it's supposed to be. I painted it first so that it would be uh, nice and consistent, and then a bunch of quick cuts. And then using the same roundover setting that we did for the boxes themselves, I like to do it on what will be the inside top of the face. So when you grab it and pull it out, your fingers don't catch on that. I'm gonna put some shims in there. This is just like a little set of varying thicknesses to raise up my initial boxes. I'm gonna work from bottom up. And then you pull out the drawer slides and drill and screw in. Very simple. That's good. That's good. And then to do the remaining ones, I cut some half inch spacers and I'm gonna lay those on top on each side. And then I will just set the next level on those. And if the measurements are done right, it should all kind of just work its way up until you got all laid in. Moving on to the faces, I'm gonna use some spacers as well to lift it up. I'm gonna clamp it once it's in place, and then I'm going to attach just using uh, two screws from the inside, and the, the handles will also help hold it once we install those. We should have even spacing working our way up. Same method. Here's another cheap jig. This one I would kind of recommend as really worth it. I mean, the drawer slide one is worth it too, absolutely. But this one really makes your life easier when you are trying to attach handles. Uh, it lets you really position and set up exactly the screw spots for whatever type of handles you're using. It's really easy to line it up, really easy to do repeats, uh, big fan. You're sharp, you got them eagle eyes, you probably noticed that uh, those screws aren't long enough, um, which is a bummer. So I had to go back to the store to get longer, long enough screws, I should say. Um, but in the meantime, I drilled out all the holes for the handles and then popped out all my drawers for a final finishing. And we will apply two to three coats of the same poly and they are completely done. Final assembly. With uh, help from one of my kids, I placed my cabinet inside the bench, and then I'm just securing it with a couple well-placed screws. The weight of it keeps it from really moving anywhere. So we have a top 
that's sitting on the bench frame. We have a cabinet sitting inside the bench frame. And that's it. Real easy to take apart and move if need be. Put all the drawers in. Look at that. And we'll give it a stress test. Check the weight, check the flexibility. Feeling good. Until I lost some footage. First time this has happened to me. Very embarrassing. So you missed the part where my friend Brent came by and I was like, hey Brent, would you mind helping me move this into my basement? He was like, hey, no problem. So uh, we moved it down and in this dramatic recreation, this super organized area is where it's going to be. And you would have seen a really cool transition shot where it would like dissolve into the new bench instead of that plastic table. It would have been, that would have been really neat. <sighs> Moving on. I decided to add a little support to the front couple boards there because that's where most of the weight will go. So off camera, I glued two two by fours together, cut a miter on it and countersunk two holes uh, so that I could screw it in and, and cover up the screws, keep it looking nice and flush. Uh, really simple. It's a corbel or console, whatever you call it. Um, and I just set it there, pressing up against the top and use these four and a half inch timber screws that go in really easily. And then glued in the plugs over that. It, it's less decorative and more just something to reinforce that top because that's where most of the weight will be when I'm working. And while that's drying, we will move on to the paper dispenser. So I just took two scrap pieces of hardwood, um, used a Forstner bit to cut a hole, and then very carefully, whenever you're doing something like this, watch your fingers on a router. But use a champ for bit to, uh, to, you know, smooth it out, make it look a little more professional, and then traced off a little pattern. It's just random. And then I painted the two identical holders and a bit of PVC pipe with the same paint we used before. And then I attached the two holders from below to a scrap piece of hardwood, and then drill a hole through each side, cleanly through each side of the PVC. And I'm using, this is from like a skateboard wheel, I forget what you call it, but you could use a cotter pin or a clevis pin, whatever they're called. That'd probably be easier to find. And then I'm just kind of making sure it's straight and drilling and screwing straight into the bottom of the bench top. Very simple. And then insert your PVC through your roll of paper and fasten your pins to both sides. And now you have an easy to change and easy to grab paper roll. It's big enough you don't even have to look, just reach your hand over and look at that whole bench. Really good for, you know, glue ups, uh, drawing plans on, whatever. Keeping your bench clean, success. And then just cause why not, it's easy to do. Uh, I took an old bandsaw blade and cut it down to size and literally just screwed it to a piece of scrap ply and then just screwed that in to the opposing side. So again, without having to look, if you just fold your paper over, it's, it's about an inch from the edge and just pull it down. Look at that. Sure, you could use a knife, but that's neater. Uh, and now our glue's dry. So we'll just take a flush trim saw on the plugs on both sides. And very exciting. I had ordered this vise from Veritas, but it was back ordered, which is why I brought the bench down in the first place. Otherwise I would have done all this in the garage. So it finally showed up. I drew out where it's supposed to go. There's videos you can find online, but this inset vise is really easy to install. It's just very messy. Um, basically the bulk of it goes in the middle of this big spot, and then you, you just do two shallow sides for it to be inset. So I use a chisel to get some lines all straight so that it doesn't splinter. And then using a spiral bit, I just took my time and made a tremendous mess this would have obviously been better to do in the garage, but the vise didn't show up until a while. Um, so you hog it out, and you can see sort of the shallower sides, and that lets it sit flush with the top. And again, if you're gonna get one of these, um, there's better instructions online, but it's, it's easy to put in, it's really easy to put in. And then you screw it down, 
And one of the cool features of this is the, the vice part, the top of it that, that applies pressure, just pops in and out. So if you want a flat surface, that just lifts right out. And when you're using it, you put it in. And then you can determine how many dog holes you want. And I went with the uh, maximum spacing that you could with that vise recommended, which is seven inches. And then I made a really simple little jig uh, with this bushing that I also bought from Veritas. And it allows you to pick how far you want it from your edge and perfectly space it every time. So you use a huge three quarter inch bit, clamp down your jig, and just move it down the line, you know, wherever you want a dog hole. The bushing was cheap, but I can knock it out and use it in another jig anytime I want. So it's just something I got from now on. And here is a look at all these very clean dog holes that were pretty easy to do with just a little bit of planning. Lastly, we're going to glue and screw these two scrap wood, hardwood pieces together to make a cheap free vise. Ignore the holes on the larger piece. Originally, I thought I would just use the one piece and then I realized if I screwed straight up into the bench top, I could splinter and blow out the front of that. So I added the back piece and to install, I'm just clamping it and making sure it's perfectly flush with the top of the bench, the front of the bench, I should say, and then screwing in three screws into that second piece. Um, this is not perfect, this is not really a vise, but you can use clamps to hold material and it costs nothing. And if you have a wider board, because we offset that second piece, you could clamp it on the left there using spring clamps or heavier duty. And it's better than nothing until you get a real vise. Yeah, I am uh, really glad I made this. This is great for my basement. It's just nice to have a really, really solid work surface to do anything, fixing stuff around the house, whatever. But. Hopefully a little bit of um, traditional hand, quiet woodworking that I can do when the mice are sleeping during the winter and get better at all that stuff. But beyond that, it's just something that's gonna last uh, far longer than I will. Um, and it's good storage and I like it. I hope you can make one yourself if it's something you need for your garage, for an outfit table, for an assembly table, uh, or as a traditional hand tool woodworking table in your garage. It's really what it's for. Um, thank you so much for watching. Plans are available and uh, good luck out there. I'm gonna figure out how these go together. Talk to you next time. Heavy.